Hello and welcome to Vimbaka for Salesforce demo series. By this time, I've already installed this solution using a regular AWS EC2 instance and managed to configure it for the first use. You can check the other video to see that. And now, let's finally discover what this product is capable of. I'm going to log in using my Azure Active Directory user account, which was configured to be an administrator for all Salesforce organizations managed by this solution. Ok, let's have a look at the user interface for the first time. As you might notice, I've already got a few backup policies configured with a history of operations. Backup policy is purpose to ensure protection for Salesforce, org data, metadata and files altogether. After the initial full data sync, it will only collect incremental changes. In policy settings, you can define custom schedules per Salesforce object or exclude objects from backup completely. For example, when your entire Salesforce organization is backed up daily, you can choose to protect opportunities, contacts or accounts every 10-15 minutes. Keep in mind that for consistent restore of selected objects, you need to have the dependent objects on the same schedule. Here is how I assign 10 minute schedule for my accounts backup. The next feature allows you to avoid hitting the daily API limit by setting consumption threshold. Available API calls are checked before each policy start and during the session as well. When the threshold is reached, the policy will stop or simply fail to start. As soon as the API limit is renewed and the new policy attempts to start, the backup operation will resume. I will enable protection for files and attachments on the next step and go ahead to retention options. Since you control the data in the infrastructure, it's up to you to define the data retention. You can separately set retention schedule for objects, files and file versions. Metadata doesn't have retention settings and all the changes are stored in a Git compatible repository. It is recommended to leverage Vim Backup and Replication for implementing the backup copy jobs and long-term archival on cloud storages. Alright, let's go ahead to the other tab and launch Recovery Wizard to check its capabilities. Restore field values would be helpful when you need to quickly revert a massive change or restore a few selected fields back to the previous value from the backup. If you have a CSV list with the record IDs, you can specify the values as a filtering condition over there as well. Now I'm showing the recovery of metadata. I select this recovery type, pick an organization and then perform the search for all the records out there. Imagine I've been trying to put together an Apex trigger and then I broke it. Oh, no problem at all. I'll go ahead and select this metadata type and then I click on the latest to see how its previous versions different from what I've got right now in production. If I need to roll it back, I can add it to the restore list and then proceed or download it to my workstation and review the code again. Ok, let's go back to the restore type step and select the most frequent recovery scenario related to deleted, merged or corrupted records. Again, I'll pick the Salesforce organization where I have a corrupted account record and on a data step, I will pull up the list of all org accounts from the backup. To narrow down my search, I could apply various filters or simply type desired name, uh, let's say United Corporation. Now let's click on the latest to see account details. Built-in functionality allows me to compare data in production with the backup state and I'm seeing where the problem is. I have merged two United Corp branch accounts by mistake, so I need to fix them. I'll go ahead to check them at once and proceed to the next step. As you can see, I can restore the hierarchy for any record. This feature allows me to drill down and select specific child hierarchy branches at any depth that I prefer or restore the entire record tree as it was in the corresponding backup. I can even restore parent records and relationships up to three levels. I'm going to leave all child objects checked for my desired United accounts and just quickly showing you how many dependencies they have. Moving on to the next step. Here you can choose to overwrite values for existing records in production as well as to customize fields. Should the old field no longer exist, 
feel free to map it within the restoration process to the new one. And the last decision at the bottom of the page is about Salesforce optimization. Business logic and automated rules can block your restores or trigger undesirable side processes during recovery. You can choose to manually handle the Salesforce automation exceptions or let the product disable all triggered automation for the user that is executing the backup and restore operation. During the last step, I can verify whether I have sufficient permissions to perform recovery and also have an option to export a CSV file with the data I'm about to recover. Now let's finally go ahead and launch the recovery. It should not take that long. Yeah, 17 seconds. That's really cool. All desired accounts are fixed now and my sales team will be happy about it. The last but not the least, go to product configuration to stay up to date on backup and restore activities by configuring alerts for certain events using email or Slack engines. That was a quick look at Veeam Backup for Salesforce and its capabilities. The product is available already. Don't waste any second and test it in your Salesforce environment today. For more information, please visit veeam.com. Stay tuned. Bye.